Hello, welcome to S Chemistry. I am your instructor, Dr. Suvas Lowry. I will be teaching BSc fifth semester physical chemistry course on photochemistry. Here is the outline. In this lecture, I am going to cover quantum yield, then factor affecting the quantum yield, followed by photosensitization reaction. Let's start with quantum yield. So what is quantum yield? The quantum yield of photochemical processes is defined as so quantum yield denoted by phi and it is defined as phi equal to number of molecules that react divided by number of quanta of radiation absorbed. So absorption generally takes place by either reactant or your photosensitizer. So here how many number of molecules that are actually is reacting and how many number of quanta of radiation absorbed by your reactant molecules. So this ratio generally indicates the quantum yield of photochemical processes. In other words, you can define as phi equal to number of molecules that react divided by number of Einstein's of radiation absorbed. So this uh, definition for photochemical processes is from reactant point of view. Now we will see from product point of view. So the quantum yield for the product formation is similarly defined as phi equal to the number of molecule of the product form divided by number of quanta of radiation absorbed. So how many number of quanta got absorbed by the reactant and how many number of molecules or moles that got produced from that absorption of radiation. So this ratio which tells about the quantum yield. So in other word you can also define as phi equal to number of moles of product form divided by number of Einstein's of radiation absorbed. Where phi equal to rate of processes divided by intensity of light absorbed. So by denotation we have phi equal to V by I absorbed. So this is a general representation of quantum yield. Now we will see what are the factors that are affecting the quantum yield. So there are three to four factors are there which is actually affecting the quantum yield. Chemical reaction depends on several factors such as wavelength of light that is absorbed and its intensity, the presence of inert gas and the temperature. So these are the four factors. So now we will see the temperature factor. So for endothermic reaction are extremely slow at ordinary temperature. So endothermic reaction means you required you have to provide thermal energy to reaction happen. So for that if you provide the temperature then your rate of reaction will increase. So endothermic reaction these are the extremely slow at ordinary temperature that is room temperature if you provide the heat energy to the reaction the quantum yield of such reaction will increase with the increase in the temperature. So that is the positive effect of the uh, temperature on quantum yield for the endothermic reactions. Now we will see wavelength what is the effect of wavelength on photochemical reactions. So the energy absorbed per moles of reactant varies inversely as the wavelength of the light absorbed. That means uh, the shorter the wavelength greater the energy absorbed. So as we know the shorter the wavelength your energy is the higher. So that is inversely proportional. So your wavelength is smaller 
so energy will be higher so for higher energy you will be uh, will be the uh, so quantum field will be the higher at lower wavelength because uh, as you get more time to uh, react or absorb so your quantum field will be the higher so it will take one to one interaction between your quantum of light and the reactant so that's why quantum yield will be higher at lower wavelength so lower wavelength means higher energy so third factor is the light intensity so the decrease in light intensity increase the quantum yield so you require only one uh, quanta has to react with one molecules that's why your, if your light intensity is lower like decreased so you are increase in the quantum yield so this is also inversely proportional now we will see for the presence of inert gas what happens if your inert gas is present in your reaction system the addition of inert gases to the absorbing system in the photochemical reaction increases the quantum yield because your inert gas will no will not react with your inert gases so that's why your it will definitely are going to increase your quantum yield so this is the positive effect of the uh, presence of inert gases has a positive factor on the quantum yield now we are going to see for photosensitized reaction so under this topic what is mean by photosensitized reaction so some chemical reaction take place not by absorption of light by one of the reactant but by third substance which transfer the absorbed energy to the reactant so here a photosensitizer act as a intermediate carrier so it will carry from your source uh, to reactant so that's why they give one name as a third substance so re your reactant a and b will not participate in this absorption of light so the third substance which transfer the absorbed energy to the reactant so that's why we call it photosensitizer to the third substance so this third substance which itself does not undergo any changes is called the photosensitizer so and the process is known as a photosensitization so now we will see the type of the photosensitizer so there are two types of the photosensitizer one is commonly used as a atomic sensitizer so in this sensitizer the commonly used mercury cadmium and zinc metal so there are second type of photosensitizer is molecular sensitizer so in that case we use such as benzophenone and sulfur dioxide so these two molecules generally used as a molecular sensitizer now we are going to see mechanism of photosensitization consider a general donor acceptor system in which only donor d that is the sensitizer absorb the incident light photon and the triplet state of donor is is higher in energy than the triplet state of the acceptor a so that is the reactant as shown in figure 5 the absorption of the photon produces the singlet excited state of the donor that is 1d which via intersystem crossing gives the triplet excited state of the donor that is 3d this triplet excited state then collides with the acceptor producing the triplet excited state of the acceptor that is 3a as shown in figure 5 here 
so and the ground state of the donor if 3a gives the desired product the mechanism is called photosensitization if however the product of interest result from 3d then a is called the quencher and the process is known as the quenching process <clears throat> now we will see the representation of photosensitized reaction so here we are going to see see the how the representation of the photosensitized reaction and the quenching processes so as shown here so d represent the donor of the molecule that is sensitizer if that sensitize sensitizer, sensitizer absorb the energy h nu and it goes to the singlet excited state of molecule we represent by 1d further this 1d get uh, intersystem crossing and gives 3d so this 3d is nothing but your triplet excited state of sensitized molecule further this triplet excited state of donor molecule collides with the acceptor that is the reactant and after the collision happens donor molecule uh, that is the sensitizer goes to the ground state d and your acceptor molecule goes to the excited state that is 3a 3a means triplet excited state of the acceptor molecule further this triplet excited acceptor or reactant give if it gives the product we call the process we call the photosensitization reaction and if your 3d gives a product we call the quenching processes so as shown in this figure so mechanism of the photosensitization photosensitization was discovered by scientist frank and carrio in 1922 so he was the german physicist james frank and uh, gustav hazel were awarded the 1925 nobel prize physics nobel prize for their research on atom electron collisions now we will see examples of the photosensitized reaction so first example as you can see uh, where first example is dissociation of hydrogen molecule so here hydrogen is the gas for this reaction we use mercury as a pho photosensitizer so here we use the atom sensitizer so first initially mercury accept the photon that is h new energy and goes to excited state that is h g star mercury star this mercury excited mercury transfer the energy to the hydrogen molecule and this hydrogen after transferring this energy to the hydrogen molecule it goes to excited state and mercury goes to the ground state and this hydrogen excited hydrogen molecule react and form the 2h molecule so this is the dissociation of hydrogen molecule h2 to 2h so this is radical hydrogen so another example is we use for the isomerization of butene 2 so what happens for this we use molecular sensitizer that is so2 sulfur dioxide if sulfur dioxide absorb h nu energy it goes to the excited state uh, sulfur dioxide excited state represented by so2 star this so2 star further react with the cis butene 2 and it get convert to the trans 2 butene so here your so2 excited state goes to the ground state and cis 2 butene goes to the excited state and this excited state further get isomerized due to the 
uh, this excitation process and convert to the transbutene 2 so this is the example of isomerization of butene 2 molecule so this is the use of or uh, application of photosensitized reaction so these are the references for this slide and uh, for images this is the reference and for the content these three books you can refer and here we came to end of this lecture uh, thank you for kind listening see you in next lecture till then happy learning